how to be productive in the most unproductive of times. So since we all know we have been interacting online, especially in these times when we are confined to our homes, I feel such webinars give us space to interact, share our feelings, and understand that we are not alone. And especially mental health is also a priority for us to focus on. So today's webinar is going to discuss something about productivity and our mental health. We are joined by the speaker, Ms. Prakriti Das. She's an old friend of the department and currently working with Acuity Knowledge Services as an assistant director. Prakriti has a total work experience of over 16 years. She has worked across various multinational firms like American Express, Vertex, Barclays in the position of a trainer and directing people to maximize their potential. So we welcome you, Prakriti. And um, Prakriti has conducted a few workshops for the students of DCEJ earlier. So we know how inspiring and transformational her workshops have been. So taking much less of the time, I now share the stage with Prakriti to start the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Babine. So uh, welcome, everybody, and uh, good afternoon. How is everybody doing? I would like to hear from a couple of you. Yes, ma'am. How are you all doing? Doing well. We saw you here. They are, I'm sure they're all excited. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, so I would like to hear from everybody. So you all know I'm not going to go ahead with my introduction. Babli has introduced me really well. Uh, thank you, Bhagdeen, for that. And everybody, Yuki, Gita, thank you for having me here. Uh, huge, huge privilege. And like I was talking to Gita and Yuki the other day, and I said, you know, coming back to your university is actually, uh, it's a huge, huge uh, privilege to me because it's, it's one of the best uh, times I've had in training. You know? So uh, interacting with all of you has been amazing. So I'm so glad to be here. Uh, do feel free to switch your videos on. Um, it's nicer if I can see you, it'll be nice and just keep yourself in mute. Uh, and I think there is an option of raising your hand. So if you have a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would like to see you. you know, that's, that's, I, li I, I like to be connected. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, interesting topic, huh? very cliche in the current times. Like how do you be productive in unproductive times? So when I gave this topic to Yuki, I knew how cliche it was. Because these days, that's what everybody's talking about. Let's be productive. The times are unproductive. You know, things are not going that great. We don't know what our future holds. And I'm sure all of you have questions being university students, right? Then what does my future look like? Am I going to be great? Am I not going to be that great? What's going to happen? So my question before I begin the, you know, today's session is going to be, what are you currently doing to be productive? It's a very simple question. Go for it, whoever wants to answer. It takes a heart of a lion to start, huh? or a lioness. Come on, guys. <laughs> are you doing something to be productive? That's my question. And even if you're not, it's okay. But my question is, are you? And if, if you are, then what? What is it? I've been writing. You've been writing? Yes, I have been seeing your writing also. <laughs> Some great stuff. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Ina, Divya, Jagruti. Yeah, I started off with a course in writing to know how can the things be made more professional. Oh, interesting. So you have an interest in writing, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Started with a professional uh, training certificate course for it. Oh, good. Excellent job. What about Hina? Okay, I've got Divya's message saying, okay, some uh, Lakshmi is saying doing internships and online courses. Somebody's message me. Uh, oh, so I am getting a couple of very interesting uh, messages. Doing internship, I'm online courses. On, um, yes. Sorry. Go ahead. I am working on my photography. Oh, really? You're a photographer? Yeah. Awesome. No, no, I'm not professional. You know, you, you just need to tell yourself you're a photographer. You don't need to dictate. <laughs> that's, 
that's more than enough. <laughs> okay, I've got another message where somebody is saying that trying digital art is interesting. Yeah? What else? I'm sure all of you have a lot of interesting stuff with you. Learning professional writing. Arati, okay. A lot of you are writing. Okay. A lot of you are writing. This is a writer's paradise. Like, you all can make like a nice group post the session and write together. So is no one just sitting and looking out of the window? <laughs> <laughs> Something that we couldn't do in the earlier days. Or oh, it's like, let's yeah. pick a productive answer. <laughs> <laughs> no it's so hard to peep out. Oh. Huh? Sorry? Nature. It's too hot to peep outside. <laughs> it's too hot to peep outside. Yeah. I have uh, Shreya who's written in who's saying that she's learning the ukulele. You guys know what the ukulele is? A small guitar. It's like a small version of a guitar. It's a beautiful instrument. Then somebody is learning the German language. Then somebody is making mandalas and improving my drawing and sketching, trying new DIYs, sketching, poetry, dancing, photographing, writing blogs, and gender issues more frequently. I wonder why gender issues. <laughs> okay, so a uh, lot of you are doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think somebody needs to put their, uh, you know, themselves on mute because I can hear some background noise. Yeah. Okay, now my first pointer to all of you in today's session, very cliched session about being productive in unproductive times is this. Can you read this? Or is it the other way around? Yes, we can read it. Yeah? Can somebody say it out loud? Can you hold it a little more um, in the middle of the frame? And is that better? No, no, little backwards. Like where your face is exactly that. Oh. <laughs> Don't stress. We can hmm? read. Don't stress. Be happy. So Instead. <laughs> so I'm going to help you read it. So the first message that I want to give out to all of you is don't stress and be happy instead. You have nothing to prove to anybody, guys. You don't have to do, you know, things that people expect you to do. You don't have to fall under pressure just because the entire world is doing whatever they're doing. Yeah? We're all in this together. We are all dealing with something we have never dealt with before. So like uh, Bablin said, it's okay to look out of the window. And it's okay to actually do nothing four days out of seven days. And why am I saying that, guys? You know why? Because if you have the stress of doing something productive, you will never be good. Let that sink in. I'm going to say that again. If you're working with the stress of being productive, you will never be productive. So my message to all of you in this session today is, you know what, at times it's okay to not be productive. It's, it's more important to be happy because everything is new to us right now. Does that make sense? So you all are doing great stuff. Huh? I mean, don't get me wrong, but don't do it under duress. Don't do it under stress because the world is working. Right, because you know what? So that's point number one. I hope, I hope that kind of has made you think about it. You have nothing to prove to anybody. Okay. Uh, what about exercise routines? What about, uh, you know, what about working out? I've, I've been seeing all these celebrities that they've been putting these videos, right? People are working out, people are doing yoga, people are, you know, walking. There are a lot of things that people are doing. How does that figure for you? Are you spending some time in any physical exercise? You guys saying no. <laughs> I did it for Child like yeah. I did it for like a week when the lockdown happened. Then yeah. even the middle I started going out for walks with my mother, but then I was like, I'm not an exercise person. No, no, no. You're okay. not an exercise person. Okay. okay. Jagriti is like, no, I don't I don't feel like exercise. Okay, let me just explain something to you. Uh guys, uh, you know, more than being productive, what is important at this point is exercising. And I'll tell you why. A lot of times people say things like, uh, you know, if 
I have a happy mind, I will have a happy body. Sorry, if I have a happy, uh, yeah, if I have a happy mind, I will have a happy body, right? So if I, only if I'm in the mood for it, right, Yuvika, Jagrati, when I'm in the mood for it, I will go out and take a walk. But the point is that right now, we don't have that much. And sometimes it works the other way around. So if you have a happy body, it will convert you into a happy mind. Because it's very, very scientific. If you're exercising, and I'm, I'm not saying you need to do things that everybody else is doing. If it's just a 20 minute walking you know, that you're doing, or even if it's just like a 15 minutes breathing that you're doing, you're actually training your mind to be happy because it's releasing happy hormones. And guys, it's very, very normal to be upset, low, depressed, anxious in the times that we're in. Yeah, so it becomes all the more critical. And trust me, you're going to thank me for it later. Right now, it may seem like a task, but you will start enjoying it. So it's not always that if you have a happy mind, you will you will exercise your body. Sometimes it's the other way around. If you have a happy body, it will help you deal with stuff that is happening to you right now. So my point number two is this. Happy body is equal to happy mind. Yeah, so think about it, how you want to incorporate that. Now, you have a happy body, you have a happy mind, you have done all of that. You're not taking stress about being productive. You're doing things that you enjoy. All that's great, right? Uh, now comes to, what should I do? I have so much time. I have so much to achieve. Of course, I've got my internship. I've got a couple of things to do. But there's so many things that I want to achieve, right? There's so much that I want to do. I have so many ideas in my mind. So what should I do? What should you do, guys? Help me. What do I do? I think, I think we should like write down everything, whatever we have, and then figure okay. it out with how and when we have to do it. Like in a timeline. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Shreya is also message saying plan it out. Now plan it out are three words, but my question is that's the what. Tell me the how. How do I plan it out? Okay, write it down. That's step no, one. No. What else? We all write it down. What else? You need to what else implement else? what you have planned. You need to implement it. You need to implement it. Okay, so let me just say, uh, explain something to you guys. Whenever you tell yourself that you need to do something, you will never do it. Or whenever you tell yourself, I should be exercising, you will never do it. Tell me why. Tell me you'll never do it. Or at least 90% of you will not. Why? I need to do it. I should do it. Look at the words you're using. Should, need. Compulsion. What are you doing? Compulsion. Compulsion. Okay. Command. What? Commanding Command. our minds. So, so these words, like you should, you need, you must. What do they remind you of? A forceful activity. We are forcing forceful. something, imposing something on us that we don't right. want to do. Right, right. So it seems like a forceful command, somebody says. Uh, Shreya has said that. Oh yeah, somebody said, Saurabh has said. Uh, sorry, that's not Saurabh, that's Gita. <laughs> uh, Gita has said, it uh, sounds like a teacher, right? So it sounds like a disciplinary figure. These are words teachers and our parents have said to us, right? You should exercise, you should get good marks. So what are you doing? When you're using these words now, guys, you don't realize it is linking you to an authority figure. And we, as people, rebel against authority figures. So if something is said to you with authority and with a command, you're not going to do it. So if you tell your body, I should exercise, you will not. Why not make it a happy event for yourself? So instead of saying I should exercise or I should plan it out, what do you think you should say instead? What can you say instead? I will. Yeah, I will is a better word. I want to. I want to set this right. Like, you know, there's a, there's a famous uh, quote that I have read uh, that we're always... Uh, you know, saying things like, what if this doesn't happen? But what if it does? Nice. What if I fall? But what if you fly? Nice. So the way you talk to yourself 
is extremely critical, guys. So when you're saying you should make out a plan or you should plan it out, you're not going to do it. In most cases, of course, we're human beings and some of us know. So my recommendation or suggestion to you is don't tell yourselves to do it. Don't force yourselves to do this. Tell yourself you want it. Yeah? And out of those 10 goals, sorry, sorry, Jabra, you just, just love me. Out of those 10 goals that you have, always, always remember one thing. And I'm going to show it to you. Less is more. Yeah. Less is always more. Don't pick up 10 goals to achieve because you'll not achieve those 10 goals. If you take 10 balls and you juggle, what's going to happen? They'll all fall. Not only, even one won't stay. But if you pick up two balls, the possibility of you achieving that is more. And the quality and your, what you're going to achieve is going to be so much more. So plan for less and achieve more. It always works, guys. Quality over quantity. Yeah? Jagriti, you were saying something. I'm like, we were talking about that we force things on ourselves. So what I've done is I've made this diary of mine. This is the diary that I possess. And in the night, I put down things what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Yeah. And, and in the night, once again, when the day ends, I take mark the things what I've done and I put a cross on things what I've not done. So that gives you motivation ki chalo itna achieve ho gaya, itna reh gaya aur uske despite maine kuch kiya to I write it down in the night ki this is the plus point that I did. So after a few days you get irritated yaar ye kyu achieve nahi ho raha. So you start achieving those things on your own when you write it down and you pick them in the night and or highlight it, it gives you motivation for the next day to work. It is such a, it is such a good feeling to cross things off your list. It's like, I don't know about you guys. But I feel amazing after doing it, you know. And absolutely agree what Jagrati says. Write it down and cross it out. You know the feeling you get when you have uh, cold coffee or uh, chili garlic noodles? I don't know if you guys like that. But I get that feeling when I cross things off my list. It's like, oh my God, I've achieved something. And I don't need to achieve the world. I don't need to achieve 10 things. All my goals don't need to be complete today. Can I choose what's important to me and then just focus on that? Yeah. I feel so much better about myself. And what Jagrati said is actually written down here. And I'm going to show it to you. Jagrati, could you read that? Break it down and celebrate. Absolutely. Now, break it down is something Jagrati beautifully spoke about. But celebrate is something that I don't think we do. You know, as I don't know if it's an Indian thing or is it a universal thing. Whenever we are trying to achieve uh, something, we say, Jab tak complete achieve me hoga, no, I'm not going to celebrate. It is Sarah. So I have 10 kgs to lose. Jabta 10 nahi honge, I will not celebrate. How are you motivating yourself in those small, small, small achievements? That's what's going to motivate you to get the achievement. So tell yourself. So for example, you need to write your writing, right? You need to write two pages every day on a particular thing that you are training yourself on. Write those two pages and tell yourself, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, award myself with a uh, cold coffee after this. I'm going to award myself with uh, I mean, hopefully healthy stuff, but uh, you know, with whatever you want to uh, reward yourself with. But introduce rewards into your daily life, especially when we are here in the lockdown together, guys. You know, watch that movie that you really want to watch. Go make chili garlic noodles. Okay, that's my main thing. I love chili garlic noodles. It could be something else. Yeah. So I'm going to stop like for uh, two uh, for a minute and check on everybody. How are you all doing? Is it making sense or not? How are you? It is making sense. <laughs> it is. It is. Just... Okay. Okay. Any any thoughts? Any questions? Anything? Well, I have a list of uh, topics that I, whatever comes to my mind, I just list down the topic, whatever I have to write about. And mm -hmm. whenever I get time, I write about all those things. So, like, there are like four of those topics that you mentioned today, I have to write about that. I don't mind, and now. Yeah. I will. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. I have two, the unproductive one that you said, that it's open to mm -hmm. unproductive. And what I meant by that was 
it's okay just don't uh, just just don't be in that whole cycle like you have to be unproductive and productive as well mm-hmm. so being lazy one day or two days or three days it's okay but remember to break that cycle absolutely don't be in the same zone over and over again because that's going to create absolutely. the whole lockdown situation is going to just go into your mind then. and what is happening absolutely absolutely but then the point over here uh, yuvika is to enjoy what you do all right it's to enjoy what you do so when you're being productive as well it's important to enjoy what you're doing even if you can't enjoy uh, it 100% uh, of the time at least 60 to 70% of the thing you should be enjoying doing because then it's not going to seem like a task and i'm going to come to that later yeah so there is there's a very interesting thing i would like you guys to think about i think somebody else was saying something else right any other thoughts any anything at all but think you were saying something uh what yeah, are fast at doing things i could feel a lot of things very like if the work would take 3 4 hours to complete not like like sorry i would take like one hour to complete it and then i'm free for like 3 for the next 3 4 hours but the energy consumed was that much only so i have Absolutely. nothing to do and i'm bored as well so that is a problem then maybe maybe you need to figure out uh, more things that you're interested in and i'm going to come to that a little later right you know that bubbly new saying sir yeah you're saying what happens with me is like in a to do list we have multiple tasks some can be cooking some is related to your work so you have this liberty that over these 4 or 5 hours you can do first one this and then come back to like you because an unproductive productive cycle so yeah. i think keeping things visually in front of us also gives feels our mind that we i have the freedom to choose so i should go on again forcing but you have opened the options absolutely and that brings me to the next thing that i was going to talk about i don't know how many of you have heard there is there is a gentleman called brian tracy he came up with this one concept of eat the frog are we going so in everything that we do you know professionally or personally uh in order to achieve our goals um we don't like everything that we do you know so 80% of the things we like usually but there is a 20% which is important but you don't like it you know so for somebody who's trying to lose weight it could be something like uh staying away from fried stuff right so you like exercising you like the result but then you do you're crazy about fried stuff so it's difficult similarly uh, say you know in your profession or your um, what do you say in in your universities you love interacting you love your gds group discussions but what you don't like is writing you know you don't like writing essays so there is always a certain part of your job that you don't really like yeah and that's when this entire theory of eat the frog comes up so like yuvika was saying eat the frog i'm going to show it again like yuvika was saying then you have to break the cycle now but while saying don't stress about being uh, non productive doesn't mean that you're non productive throughout right so eat the frog is a very interesting concept now i'll explain this to you eat the frog is you know whenever you're doing tasks the tasks that are important and you don't like you finish them off first so you get up in the morning look at your to do list and tell yourself what's my frog today and if you want to know more about this guys go back to uh, you can research eat the frog brain tricks is very interesting what's my frog today you pick up your frog and then you start okay it's, this sounds very gross <laughs> do you actually eat the frog you know why because if you don't eat the frog the frog will only keep growing bigger and bigger and visualizes and bigger and when it becomes that big it will become very difficult for you to eat it so this is how your mind works whenever there is a task which you know is important to achieve your goal and you don't want to do it you keep procrastinating it just keeps getting bigger in your head you don't want it to reach a point that becomes so big that you're unable to eat it and there goes your goal so maybe when you're writing you know when you're writing about the stuff that you want to do you might want to ask yourself what your frogs are so if i throw this question back at all of you right now i would love it if you share what your frogs are 
could be anything, personal, profession. What are your frogs? Are you aware of what your frogs are? Give it eyes. Preparing breakfast for my own self in the morning. Who's that? Jagrati. Jagrati. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, that is say. too. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, preparing breakfast is her prom. But both of Karna Pata, now I'm just telling you. <laughs> okay, okay, that's your frog. What about the others? Tell me your frogs. Studying Studying? Studying my subjects. Studying. Sitting and studying. So there's a this semester. This semester, yeah. So sitting and studying kind of uh, the attention does so can't happen. So what I do is whenever I wake up in the morning. After I eat my food, the first thing I do is study the particular thing. Yeah. I don't write first because my mind is the most refreshed at that time. So whatever I'm gonna whatever I'm gonna study, it goes straight into my mind. So the first two hours of my day, I am like the most I'm like a bulb. <laughs> so I do that. Yeah. And you know, you will realize when you eat your frogs, uh, you will realize they're not they're not frogs actually. And at times you realize, oh my god, they're not that bad. You know, this is fun. It just sometimes it's in your mind, you know. Sometimes we are creating those uh, barriers for ourselves. That's what I've realized. Some of my frogs have got converted into princes, so to say. They're not frogs anymore, but of course, some stay frogs. Yeah. Uh, somebody has written to me, reading a novel that has been lying on my desk uh, since three months now. Akansha has uh, written this. This is her frog. And Tanya, in the last uh, for the last thing when I said you need to celebrate, has written. I used to watch two episodes of my favorite series. That's how I celebrate my small achievements. That's brilliant, Tanya. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And uh, reading a novel, Akansha, I think that's uh, something that even I was struggling with. So I'm reading this beautiful uh, book, guys, called uh, I can't forget the name. Uh, Sapiens. Have you heard of it? Sapiens. It's an awesome, awesome book. Okay, so if you like reading, uh, it's a great way to go back to the history of our human body, anatomy, etc. And in the current times, it makes a lot of sense. So anyway, I was supposed to read it, and I told myself I know that I've not been reading it because there's so many other books which are seeming more interesting that I know this will help me. So I tell myself, even if I don't read too much, I will read two pages every day. You know, even if I give myself a target of two, I end up reading ten. So that's what I'm trying to say. That a lot of times you underestimate your own selves. If you can't give yourself a huge target, chota target, chota target, can you say, "Oh my God, you'll always overachieve your small target." So that's quite uh, motivating. So what about the others? What frogs, guys? Any other frogs? Laziness is my frog. Vipya, I wish you could come on camera and uh, tell us what you think. Is it possible? You can write to me if it's not possible. <laughs> it's okay. We're all sharing. We all have prompts. Vipya, are you coming? There you are. Do you want to tell us about this? Okay, Vipya has disappeared. Huh? So she's got a pretty, I think I put her in a spot. <laughs> Your voice is not audible. Maybe you're in mute, Divya. You can go off mute. Okay. Am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, you are. Tell us. Yeah, laziness in the sense ki agar main abhi jaise we discussed ki hume exercise karna hai. I started doing yoga, and then my laziness is came in front of that yoga also ki maine do din kiya, fir nahi kiya. So that is the main thing. So I will uh, I will give you a little concept and uh, see if that helps you. Uh, do you know that the biggest procrastinators are actually people who are perfectionists? Think about what I just said. The biggest procrastinators are people who are perfectionists. Tell me why. Because they think a lot. Okay. Put in a little more information. Because they want to. Because they want to work. In the most appropriate and the most uh, wholesome sense, yeah. they would uh, the, every day they would keep thinking about the same thing. 
yeah. I will do it, but am I like, do I have all the resources to do it today? Will I be exactly. able to do it in the most appropriate sense? Exactly. Exactly. So what happens is, and I think Shreya has messaged saying, uh, because they want to more, uh, work more efficiently, which is absolutely true. So I'll tell you what happens. So say that you're a perfectionist. Aapko sab kuch perfect chahiye, right? So you cannot do yoga without your yoga mat. You want to ensure that instead of 20 minutes, it's for one hour. You want to ensure there's the right kind of music, there's a the right kind of environment, yes. and there's the right kind of world, which is actually a make-believe world. The right kind of everything does not happen right. at the same time, <laughs> right? But this right. is this is what happens with perfectionists. So they're like, no, I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to do it when everything is perfect. The point I'm trying to make is, guys, nothing will ever be perfect. Do it now, okay? <laughs> Sustainability is bigger than perfection. Think of what I just said. Sustainability and consistency is Trump's perfection. If you do things consistently, even if it's for 20 minutes every day, it's bigger than perfection because perfection cannot be achieved every day. And that's okay. You will get results with sustainability. You will get results with uh, you know, consistency. You will not get results with perfection. So how are you going to change that? Think about it. Okay, now. Okay. Yeah. Hina, you want to say something? I think I would like to share an experience from my PhD. Sure. Is that Imran? Yeah, yeah, it's me, Imran. I have been. Go for it. Uh, Go for it. Actually, a PhD teaches you a lot about, you know, uh, working every day, like working every hour, every minute, you know. It's such mm -hmm. a kind of an experience wherein you will have to put in an effort every day, like every day. Right. I, I remember right. I used to go to the library uh, from uh, I used to go to the library from uh, like I I would uh, leave my home at uh, eight thirty and reach mm -hmm. my library at nine. So right. we would be we would be among the first ones to you know uh, get into the library and we'll settle down, put our laptops our books there uh, you know on the table, and mm -hmm. from that moment on to twelve thirty in the night or one two. Mm -hmm. we, we used to do our dinner at uh, at the at the university canteen, so it was a wow. constant, constant, constant reading and writing every day. I mean every day, wow. not even okay. Sundays. Sundays we'd do half day, but half day we'd go, and it was in the constant doing of those things. Those things after five years, there was a thesis, very, very well structured, very well, uh, uh, you know, argue with with an argument with lot of rigor. That's how mm -hmm. you, when when you look back, then you then you think, my God, how how did I achieve this thing? So it was Absolutely. not uh, it was not you know uh, one day you uh, sit up and say, look, I have done something. It was in the mm -hmm. doing of constant you know uh, those exercises every day. You know writing five hundred words every day. You know okay mm -hmm. probably you know uh, you know next month editing them or deleting them altogether. That's a different thing. But it was mm -hmm. like every day you would put in some kind of effort on paper. You know, and, right. Start, and right. train, so, so, Imran, train your so what mind. worked? What, yeah. what is the one thing that worked? I think it was the schedule, maintaining the schedule, uh, uh, dedication, and consistency. Mm -hmm. That was it. Consistency, right? Yeah. Consistency. And tell me another thing. And tell me another thing, Imran. Did you feel passionate about your job every single day? Not at all. Not at all. That's the point I wanted. It was, it That's was the point scary. I wanted. It was scary every day. It was, uh, you know, something that I yeah. would not uh, like to do. Yet I, I uh, you know, uh, asked myself, made myself understand, no, this is what you are supposed Absolutely. to do. You know, pushing Absolutely. that extra mile, going that extra mile. I think that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. So allow yourself uh, to say that it's okay that I don't feel passionate about what I'm doing every day. But you know what? If you have passion three days out of five, you're at a good place. And if you don't have passion two days, it's okay. There can be zero activity days when you're like, Aaj kuch nahi. Man hi nahi hai. that's fine. But where is it tilting towards is what you want to see? Am I trying to perfect it or am I trying to be consistent? These are two things you want to uh, you know, uh, look at. I think, uh, even, I think uh, even in relationships, Intensity over consistency. Think about I it. Think, I think uh, we, we in academics or in other professions must emulate things from the sports people. You know, the, the yeah. kind of schedule they have, you know, um, yeah. exercises, uh, diet, you know, hygiene. I think uh, we mm -hmm. can 
because I know many of them who are professionals out there. So their work routine is very, very tough for us to emulate normally. You know, yeah. they are yeah. the people who have discipline and consistency. I think these are the two, 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 two major things, you know, two major factors which will determine. Uh, Correct. So, Imran, yeah. I agree with what you say, but I'll just add something there so that we don't get confused. Uh, yes, discipline. Yes, consistency. But no pressure about being disciplined and being consistent. That's actually one of the main things we need to understand. If I get into the pressure, then I'll again end up being the perfectionist that I don't want. Okay, so just just think about this a little bit as well. But ma'am, I think having passion to do something is really very important. What because unless you are passionate about things, you can't do it in a okay. sustainable or in a perfectionist manner. This I feel. Yeah, I'm sorry, but who's this? Jagri. Not the students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jagriti, I completely agree with you, hundred percent. So that's what I'm saying, that passion has to be there. So, you know, if I have to put it in three ways, three things that need to be there, uh, even when you're working or you're in a university, one is passion to perform. Second is resilience. By resilience, I mean ability to handle failures. And third is your work ethic. And in your uh, scenario, because a lot of your university students, work ethic is going to be your school, sorry, your college ethic, you know, your integrity. So if these three things are in place, you're at a good place. And uh, Jagriti, we are not saying not have passion. Of course, like I said, three out of five days have passion. But don't yes. over question yourself if one day you're not feeling it. Hmm. You know, and also looking at the current scenario that we have. We are all in a very, in, in something that we never experienced before. Not just us, but our parents and our grandparents. Yes. I don't think we've ever faced this. We don't know how to deal with it. We're all figuring this out together. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, a lot of people, you know, come to me and they tell me that uh, it's great that you're telling us do this, do that, be productive, but I don't know what to do. Does that happen? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm interested in. I, I like something. I start it, then I leave it in the middle of the, you know, whatever. In the middle of the uh, uh, class or after three, four classes, I lose interest. Does that happen? I think, Prakriti, these uh, interests, you know, these anxieties are also much to do with the larger uh, socio-economic, political and the geocultural location wherein, wherein we are set in. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, my tastes would, uh, I would never consider my tastes as original tastes or my values as, as the original values. They're as huh? much shaped by the larger social, political, and economic uh, rules at you know play correctly. Right. And uh, the, right. the the way neoliberal uh, capitalistic order has uh, created in us, you know, to, to invoke Karl Marx, the kind of a false uh -huh. conscious, false uh -huh. conscious. So uh -huh. I think I think we we need to really shatter that false conscious and get into a, you know uh, you know you know reading mode rather than you know uh -huh. just emulating th people and emulating people from you know popular cultural you know tropes. I think Good what, we, Good what, point. We, what Good we need point. is what we need is rigor as students. I think we lack that prakriti. I'm so sorry to say that mm -hmm. because see, technology and uh, the, the, the you know um, this mediated yeah. kind of a wisdom is not going to help us in the longer run. I have yeah. seen, I have yeah. myself seen uh, myself as being a student and of course now uh, as a teacher, so called. We are mm -hmm. not at all in the business of understanding things. You know, creating mm -hmm. that dynamic in our minds wherein we can challenge the present, mm -hmm. the contemporary moment, it's making, mm -hmm. and try to mm -hmm. shatter this and create some, you know, what do we call that? Okay, if not original, but at least something near to original. Mm -hmm. I think so I'll, uh, I'll uh, try to explain uh, what I'm trying to say in that. I totally get your point and I see where you're coming from. Uh, the point I'm trying to make though is that uh, when you are starting something new, mm -hmm. are you... Can you see this? This is curious uh, and what else? Uh, I'm not or are you curious or interested? Okay, okay, interested. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. think about this a little before you add your thoughts. Here. I think, uh, you know, academic training has made me uh, um, not, not just curious and not just interested, but much more than that, you know? Inquiring, you know, uh, suspicious, 
<laughs> all those things together i can g- just go on and on and on you know uh, put yeah. as many adjectives as possible but at the same time uh, um, i'm sure that uh, the, the, the kinds of uh, training uh, the, the kind of trainings that we need to acquire must also come from uh, the reflection of our own selves you know mm-hmm. i so, think so, yeah how uh, how what imran is trying to say we all feel that at some point or the other so i related to myself and students i think uh, suppose we all have the we feel urgency to make a tiktok video because everyone else is doing it or i feel the urgency to watch this netflix series because all around me are watching netflix these days so that's not necessary if you are not interested if you are interested in reading a novel which may be of any genre then go for that i think that's what imran is trying to say that thinking of our original interest and not borrowed yeah. yeah you know like but, happens which is which is one way of looking at it but me but not everybody has your or imran's temperament it's important to understand that not everybody has your or imran's level of awareness and i i i know you personally i've heard imran he's got a very high level of awareness and understanding about things and i will not say that the majority has that some people are not even uh, acclimatized or um, you, you know they're not even used to the uh, you know they they the way they have grown up has been very different uh, the exposure given to them is very different so it just confuses those people and i'm talking about students i'm talking about even people at my age you know a lot of people don't even know what they're genuinely interested in so they think they are interested in something then they try it out and they're like oh my god i don't like this you know but my point i'm trying to make here is different so understand the point the point is it's it's great to be curious there is nothing wrong with in being curious yeah and if you're curious you go you pursue and you don't like it that's also okay yeah but my only point is move on to something else still the time you don't dig deeper and figure out okay i don't like this i might like this you will not know what you really like i'm saying keep the search on guys and one day you will find your calling don't get demotivated by the fact that i haven't found my calling that's the point i'm trying to make it's excellent to be curious but keep the chain on keep it going then one day you will figure out whether you're interested in something in, uh, as well i'm picking up from what imran and babli are saying don't do things because the world is telling you if you don't want to don't figure out who you are do i want to, and even if you are the kind who wants to make a tiktok video that's fine that's the way you feel better about that you because laugh that's okay who am i to judge i am no one to judge if i want to write if i want to do a writers course that's mine to do you know if i want to watch sas bahu serials that i will do if i want to sing to my husband i will do that but i own my space i own who i am and i have to be proud of that yeah and I'm sitting in front of you. I have not seen one Games of Thrones serial, which the entire world is raving about. But I'm okay with it because that's not my kind of cinema or whatever. You know, my kind of uh, thing. So it's okay. Just be yourself. Great to be curious. Uh, do you guys know of this uh, gentleman called Robin Sharma? Yeah, he wrote the monk who sold his Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's great. Yeah. So he is of the opinion. If you watch his dead videos, he's yeah. of the opinion. that be curious figure out what you want be keep being curious and he did that he tried out seven different professions and then he became a motivation factor but the point is are you trying or are you getting demotivated so i don't think whatever i start kabhi khatam nahi a lot of people do that i say prakriti i would like to add here some something more uh-huh. uh, i have heard a motivational speech by arnold schwarzenegger uh-huh. and, and of course denzel washingtons as well because they share the same kind of uh, you know the, the the conceptual framework within which they operate so i i heard them speaking about you know not falling back on something else like being single minded being single minded the problem uh, with us is that uh, in this age we have so many alternatives so many options Now, right. what we what we tend to do is we keep so many uh-huh. options open for us so if a uh-huh. doesn't work so i'll fall back on b if b doesn't work i'll fall back on see dating so, is well imran dating is also become like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> option 1 option 2 yeah so, so <laughs> swipe but, swipe swipe so but these people are finding a lot of trouble with that what they are uh, yeah. suggesting uh, you know through of course psychoanalytic research backed by psychoanalytic research so what they are saying is that 
actually this makes us less productive when you have so many alternatives when you have so many things to fall back on you're not able to you know give that you know create that brilliance in the in the in the thing that you essentially were supposed to do all right so what you do is you say no let me skip this and do this let me skip that and do if you don't try hard enough at one thing is what you say yes because there's so many other options and i i yeah. really i really subscribe to their to their theories to their uh, to their motivational speech because i don't think them just you know through a you know popular cultural trope kind of a you know a funneling but also uh, very much informed by theory and you know a larger you know understanding Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. but Imran, yeah, I'll just come in. Can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Imran, coming to your this, I'll talk about my personal experience in this lockdown. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I, I said I'll try and do something different, so I picked up the guitar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which I tried for two days, and I learned the A and the D uh, strings, and then I said, no, that's not my cup of tea, so I gave it up. Then I, <laughs> no, I gave it up, Prakriti. That's fine. That's, <laughs> that's fine. I said I can't do it. But then I tried sketching. And you wouldn't believe I've made my 50th sketch today. <gasps> wow. <laughs> so, it, it is, this totally reinforces my point, guys. Yeah, this is and, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm doing poetry was something which I was doing, so half my book is finished. So, yeah. I mean, okay, I failed in uh, guitar. But then I really am surprised that I've discovered sketching. But ma'am, you know? where, where, where does where where do you demarcate the point where you say that I have failed? Is it that no, you have? Yeah, because is it that you, yeah. this, you know uh, you could not? Now that is that is a debate waiting to happen. So I'm going to stop <laughs> okay. right there. Okay, all right. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we shut up now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no. I'm just saying that uh, we <laughs> probably. I would <laughs> love. I would love to debate on that at a later time. Thank you. But uh, in the interest of time, I would need to cut that short. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this. Oh, so Akansha has message. Would love to see Gita man sketches. That's for you, <laughs> Gita. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the point that I was making. As uh, everyone doesn't have that kind of exposure to know themselves. Like you know, a lot of people say uh, things like, even when the when wrong things are happening to you, you're getting physically abused. Right. A lot of people are of the opinion, why don't you get up and fight? I'm of the opinion that person does not have confidence for a reason. That person. Has not had the exposure you've had to get up and fight. Who am I to judge? The point is, the person has spoken today, and the person is fighting today. Am I going to support the person, or am I going to expect the person to be like me? You know. So that's the point I'm trying to make. I cannot make everybody like me. So just because I have the exposure and I have the bandwidth and the awareness to know what I like, it's important for me to be sensitive to people who don't. Yeah, and help them realize what they like. And yeah, it's okay. Just be curious, be interested. You will figure out your way. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to the next uh, point. Anybody could read this. Can you read it? Emotions is X a bad word. Is not. Emotions is not at all bad. Yeah. So that's uh, something that I. Uh, really want to stress on guys emotions is not a bad thing okay uh, there'll be days when you'll get depressed there'll be days when you'll be so low there'll be there'll be days when you want to you know probably kill each other there'll be days you would want to bang somebody's uh, head on the i mean i'm not i'm not uh, saying that physical abuse is okay i'm just saying you have those emotions yeah emotions even if you're missing somebody say your better halves your bitter halves your friends you're missing people that's also okay the point is that emotions should not make you react uh, or uh, make you commit an action that you will re later regret. You know, that's that's what emotions shouldn't do. But it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to feel low. It's okay to cry. And that will happen a lot. There will be days when you won't know why you're crying. You know, and that's fine. I just want to tell all of you it's not good. Yeah, don't feel bad. You're not weak. And there's, there's a, I write, guys. So there's this line that I wrote in one of my poems saying, uh, tough is weak and weak is tough. There are days when tough is weak and there are days that when weak is tough. It's actually one and the same thing. Just because you're weak does not define you. One day when you're weak, it doesn't define you. What about the joy in you? What about the toughness in you? Celebrate it. 
and I always say, I know this, I, I have made the mood very gambhir like this. But what I'm trying to say is, whenever you feel worry, fear, panic, uh, depression, anxiety, sit with it. Have a cup of coffee with it. Go make yourself something to eat. Have a conversation and ask yourself, why am I feeling this feeling? Where is it coming from? Understand it. Give it time. And when you give time and, uh, and space uh, to this emotion, the emotion can you know, go away after a while. But deal with it. Deal with it. You know why? Because what you resist persists. If you resist it, if you, if you resist anything and throw it, it will come back with a, with a bigger force. So it's not going away anywhere if you resist it. It's not. All right, so um, next one. Madeline, you can do the honors of reading it. Shapundi, uh, I can see the lower part of the screen. Shapundi saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think I mean by this? You know, Abraham, uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know what he said? He said, if I get five hours uh, to cut a tree, I will use three hours to sharpen my saw and two hours to cut the tree. Interesting. Huh? So whatever skill you have that is unique to you, just keep sharpening it. It needs to keep getting sharpened. It's not going to stay with you all your life if you don't sharpen it, if you don't update it. Yeah? So it's a very simple message. I don't think I need to talk much about it, but yeah, that's important too. And finally, I have a. Uh, yes, Badir, if you could read that for me. Be there. Be there. Yeah. And I want to leave you with this message, guys. Uh, be there for the people around you, be there for people you love. Uh, you know, our parents, uh, our uh, husbands, wives, our uh, grandparents, uh, they're, all re they're all there for us, right? But what's important to understand is that it's as new to them as it is to us. They have not faced this kind of situation before. So if you need protection, care, stability, security, so do they. So what are you doing you know, in your day to make them feel and say that you're there for them? They're there for you, but are you there for them? They're actually uh, the children and you become the parents. Sometimes you change roles there as well. So I hope this helped, guys. I'm going to stop for questions. I'm going to stop to take your thoughts. And uh, feel free to ask me or any thoughts that you have. Anything to share. Any, any thoughts, any observations? <coughs> Anyone wants to share something? Part you mentioned uh, in that, what I believe is that people hide from emotions because they're not particularly aware of what they want. So, unless and until you know your emotions, you are able to feel them, you are able to know each of them, and you're not afraid, be it. Mm -hmm. All kinds of despair, happiness, joy, sadness, jealousy, envy, anything. You need to know all of them and the amounts of them, like in what quantity each of them affects you. Because once it starts affecting you, it affects the people around you. And yeah. that, that is something that we need to know because emotion, being emotionally balanced is as equally important to being productive or being intelligent or being as in your mental abilities or cognitive abilities, as they say, they need to be intact and most of balance also needs to be intact because without that, you cannot survive in life. And Absolutely. that cannot happen unless and until you know your emotions and you're aware of them. Mm -hmm. And you let yourself feel each and every one of them. Just don't be like stuck on one emotion for a very long time. And obviously, you're going to create some thing in your, some, some chaos inside your mind. But slowly and gradually, you need to step from one, one emotion to another. And don't be afraid to feel any of them. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I say, like, you know, um, I come from a financial consulting uh, firm, working for a financial firm. So even in our organization, guys, uh, we focus on EQ over IQ. IQ is great. A lot of people have it. But how many of us have EQ? EQ is your emotional quotient. Because at the end of the day, uh, 
it's great that you know your knowledge is great but can you handle people around you because that is 80% of your job so for any manager in an organization for all of you who are going to be managers tomorrow the main competency that's going to be judged is how do you handle your own emotions and how do you handle the emotions of others so it's very important to understand that emotions is not a bad thing you know hiding it is not a bad thing yes and according to me emotion hamesha aapko weak nahi banata hai kabhi kabhi aapko power bhi deta hai kisi apne emotions se ladne ki aapko ek पावर मिलती है कि आप कैसे उस चीज से बाहर निकल सकते हैं और कैसे आप उस सिचुएशन को फेस कर सकते हैं हमेशा आपको वीक नहीं एब्सोल्युटली इट्स अ रिलीज ना यू नो इट्स अ रिलीज इट इज रिलीजेस एवरीथिंग टू मी सो इट्स वेरी साइंटिफिक इफ यू कैन थिंक ऑफ इट लाइक दैट सो व्हेनेवर योर बॉडी इज टेंस इट विल रिलीज राइट इट कैन कम इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टीयर्स समटाइम्स एंड बिफोर एन इंटरव्यू यू वांट टू गो द लू राइट या बिकॉज़ देयर इज वाटर दैट्स गेटिंग रिलीज व्हेन यू आर नर्वस योर हैंड्स स्वेट so it's a very scientific process of your body releasing you know stuff from you to you for you to feel lighter so what you do post that is you of course drink more water to feel hydrated and feel better but it will release and you will feel better so i don't know if you guys feel the same way but i feel better after crying and when i watch movies at me i'm a crier i cry a lot in movies okay? so don't judge me i love it so when i watch movies and cry it makes me feel good i'm like oh my god i'm able to feel this emotion that's awesome and if i can feel this emotion i'll be able to feel emotions of others and that's my job right so in our job we are partly we are not certified psychologists but we do a lot of psych- psychology related work so for me i have to know and understand people's emotions because my reality is different from their reality so can i step into their reality for a minute and stop thinking about myself and understand what you're going through that's the person i want to be but uh, prakriti i would just uh, oh. like to say that in the workplace you are not mm-hmm. allowed to exhibit your emotions you are supposed to be kind of you know the miss perfect in front of students in front of your colleagues your emotions cannot be kind of exposed no but that's why things are different <laughs> now that's how things are different yeah. now but i think uh. in work most of the <laughs> workplaces it is kind of a very no, no, no. conservative environment no 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 Not, maybe in some workplaces but uh, in yeah. the financial force uh, you mm-hmm. know i know a lot of people and uh, we actually uh, uh, you know tell people to speak about them. of course i'm not saying get into a crying fit in meetings <laughs> so that is the extreme of it all right but talking about uh, your emotions is actually something it's encouraged in today's day and age uh, and dealing with your emotions sitting with your manager and saying okay this is what is making me feel this way how do i deal with it is something we encourage now so uh, you're not supposed to be I, th- i think it has not entered the universities yes so education, education is different yes yeah education, education. it has to not enter so i i would like to add your hi ma'am you know like uh, when i talk about um, the entertainment industry where i have will i belong to i would say still i belong to um, apart from my academic uh, uh, you know industry but uh, over there we have to have a smile on our face always and even though we have we have had a very bad day or uh, you know things like somebody's even um, like my demise like my grandmother uh, where i got the news i was on the stage that she's no more but i had to finish my work and it was 5 pm till 8 i was just engaging with the audience and i was holding a smile and i couldn't cry and sure. you know those are these kind of experiences where in uh, the line you know where a very famous line that the show must go on we have to live up to that so you know there i think we have to uh, we really yeah. have to control yeah. our emotions and yeah. then we have yeah. to fake it we have yeah. to fake it yeah. in a very a uh, lively way and that's where i think you know it's it's a challenge to so be very yeah so prab jo to uh, you know help you okay there's somebody's uh, needs to go mute because i can't hear you yeah so uh, prab jo to add to what you're saying you're absolutely right because that's the entertainment industry right so you're on show at that point so you you cannot show your emotions so if i'm in a training session i can't show my emotions if i'm feeling unwell i can't but i'm just saying when it comes to managing teams prab jo you know when it comes to managing people who are reporting to me that's when it's okay for me to express how i'm feeling 
and where the people uh, in my team are okay, uh, you know, it's okay for them to express what they are. You know, so even if they're feeling disappointed, they're feeling rejected, they're feeling I'm being biased towards anybody, we encourage them to talk and have these conversations. I think but I am feeling, I, you know, so it's basically we in reference to when you have teams that you're dealing with and people reporting to in that scenario. I totally I, get it. The entertainment industry it's different. Education it's different. Yeah. But uh, I so even Dama, wherever you are. are Rahul, yeah, just I would like from... to add something. I think I completely agree with you that emotions are needed to be shown because that's the reason if you look at most of the industry like IT oh, and yeah. all depression, suicide are very common. Absolutely. I think even at workplaces and why not education also? Obviously not Absolutely. while taking a class, but yeah. it's very normal to have emotions and display them. I think maybe Absolutely. not entertainment industry when you're on a stage because you have to conduct. A or if you're in a training session, session, we get that. Yeah, or when you're teaching. I think. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, boring from what Neeti and Geeta Ma'am said that I think students enjoy our classes, those classes more when we are talking to them apart from Absolutely. Uh, what is in the syllabus and they yeah. connect and it